Hey, welcome back. Today we're continuing to work on our New York diorama and making a new island, this time with a taxi and a subway station. As you can see, I'm starting with the composition we made in the first video. The link for that video is going to be in the description. I begin by making a road, sidewalk and a curb. You know how road level is usually lower than the sidewalk? So I'm raising the sidewalk. I didn't like what the pedestrian crossing looked like being protruded, so I decided to add some edge loops there and just color the faces. It's not the most optimal solution. If I was making this for a game, adding more geometry would be a bad idea. Alternatively, you could draw this texture in a separate software, unwrap the island and place the texture where you need it. But the way I'm doing it here is much easier, and since it's just an image from my portfolio, adding extra geometry is fine here. Now I'm starting to make a car. As you saw, I copied a face from the island. Like I said in the previous videos, this is what I do and I find it faster than creating new objects. I'm starting with the most general shape of the car. I added a subdivision surface modifier and a mirror modifier. Now it's just a matter of adding more and more edge loops, moving them around, tweaking the shape until I get what I have in mind. Speaking of what I have in mind, you'd probably be surprised by how little I remember about what a car looks like without references. So I have my references on the other monitor, but I'm not tracing them. You know how you can add an image to the background, make it semi-transparent and trace its shape? I'm not doing that for multiple reasons. First of all, I'm not going for realism. And for the style I want, I don't need too many details. I want the car to look cartoonish, almost like a toy. This workflow helps me get the general shape of the car and keep it simple, without being distracted by all the details real cars have. As you can see, I'm not even trying to recreate any particular car model. I'm just making an essence of all of them. The most generalized New York taxi. I feel like this helps to produce a more unique design as well. You can stylize it any way you want and make sure it's readable and fits your style. When you're not constrained by one particular model, you can take the best features of all of them, mash them together and get the most fun, unique design. And the best part, in my opinion, is that nobody will be able to tell you that you did something wrong. I'm not a car person myself. I don't know much about cars. I'm not one of those people who instantly recognizes the model of any car they see. So if I were to recreate a real car, I'm sure I'd get something wrong. But this way, it's just an idea of a car. I went with this retro-looking design because it fits the style I'm going for. I wanted this work to look cheerful, colorful and fun. And I think rounded shapes help a lot with that. I guess sharp, edgy shapes people associate with something dangerous. So I hope that this round, almost puffy looking car would come across as more friendly. Also, the popularity of movies and TV shows set 30 to 40 years ago kind of proves that people like retro things. Maybe because they associate it with simpler, happier times like their childhood. So yeah, that's why I went with the retro design of the car. Also because older things are a little bit easier to make. I tried to keep the base of the car really simple. And now I'm adding details that make the car more interesting to look at. Like bumper, rear lights, the license plate. I didn't want to leave the license plate empty, so I drew a simple version of a typical New York license plate in Affinity Designer. I made a new material in Blender and set the image I just made as a base color. I marked the necessary edges as seams and pressed on wrap. After tweaking the position in UV editing tab, this is what I got. Here I decided to add those teeth looking things on the bumper. I don't know what they're called. As you can see, having mirror and subdivision surface modifiers makes your job much easier. In this case, it's just a matter of adding a box with two edge loops. I usually don't model things that you wouldn't be able to see from the camera. That's why I copied the bumper, but not the details we were just adding. Now I'm adding a taxi sign on the roof. You might be thinking that I should have added the bevel modifier instead of using subdivision surface with such tight edge loops. I used to do that, but then fairly recently I noticed that subdivision surface modifier makes things look a little bit more natural. I think because this way you're not beveling all of the edges equally. To the sign I added a simple emissive text object. Here I'm adding more and more details to the car, like these mirrors, but I'm constantly making sure that it doesn't get too overwhelming, because I want a car to look pretty simplified. 
I thought it would be cool and add to the atmosphere if the headlights would emit actual light, so I added two area lights there. I tend to add a lot of lights, I feel like they really help to set the mood of the scene and make objects stand out from the background. You might remember from the first video where we made the composition of the entire scene that the right side of the island is going to be covered by another island with a subway station. But the left side is going to occupy a lot of screen space in the final image. So naturally I wanted to add something interesting there and decided on pipes. I'm making them the same way I briefly mentioned in the previous video, where I extrude an edge, bevel it, and then convert to curve with a depth. In this case, I converted back to mesh to add these rings around the pipes. Like what I'm doing here, I'm adding an edge loop around the pipe, which I'm then gonna bevel and extrude faces along normals to get this. I wanted the pipes to be distinctly different from each other, that's why I'm making one of them more detailed and thinner, and another one thicker, with one big detail on it, a red valve. The valve of course had to be red, because after all of those intros to valve games, I can't imagine it being any other color. I liked what a shiny yellow pipe looked like on a matte brick background. I didn't want to have too many different colors there, that's why for the second pipe I went with something more neutral. Now it's time to make the subway entrance. As usual, I'm looking at references of course. Here are some of them. By the way, for organizing my references I use pure ref. Simplifying the subway entrance was definitely challenging, because in real life it consists of lots of small elements like balusters. Here I decided to make the balusters a little bit thinner and have more of them. Here I'm snapping to a vertex to distribute balusters evenly. I'm doing that just by pressing and holding control. That temporarily enables snapping so that you don't have to turn it on and then turn back off again. Here I'm switching to rendered mode to check if the colors and composition are working. I'm realizing that the entrance was looking a little bit too boring. It's very uniform in shape, the color is a little bit too dark for the cheerful look I'm going for, and it's not really eye-catching. Let's try to fix that. First of all, I'm switching to a brighter color and adding a light coming from underground. This helps because all of those nice reflections we just added emphasize the shape. I made the light source cold because this way it provides some nice visual contrast to the cafe behind it. Initially I was hesitant to add lights like this to the subway entrance because I was afraid they would blend too much into the background since they are also green like a cafe behind them. But then I just decided to put them on this side closer to the camera and I think it worked pretty well. I also thought this would give me another opportunity to add an extra light source. Here for the top part I chose UV sphere over the icosphere. That's because it's much easier to make this particular shape with a UV sphere topology. Like what I'm doing here. At this stage I was pretty happy with the subway entrance and I decided to move on to the next object. That's what I usually do, because I don't like perfecting any object for too long while I still have objects I haven't even started modeling. It also helps to switch your attention to something else, because then you can come back to the first object and see it with fresh eyes. Here I'm modeling a pedestrian traffic light. I didn't flip normals on purpose, but flip normals with backface calling actually made modeling this part a lot easier, because I could see through the faces. This is yet another example of me diverging from realism in order to make the image look better, this pedestrian traffic light. If you pay close attention, you'd realize that it needs to be facing the sidewalk, but it doesn't. This is because the side of the traffic light that's facing the camera now looks more interesting and I want to show it. It also looks better compositionally because on the right side of the final image, the one with four islands all together, we have tall trees that make the image right side heavy. So adding more mass on the left side helps balancing the image. I'm adding a one-way street sign to the pole. I decided to make it with geometry versus a texture because that's just easier. Originally I wanted to add a sign with a street name in its place, but in the end I decided that small letters wouldn't work in this scale. It would make other parts of the image look unfinished compared to this one. Now it's time to make the traffic light. I have references on my other monitor as usual. I'm starting with a basic shape, bevel in it to make it more smooth and round. First I'm making the top light and then copying it twice. To make this convex shape I'm just beveling the edge loop. 
To select all geometry along the shortest path, like I did here, you click on the first face, hold Ctrl, and click on the face you want the selection to end with. Here I'm utilizing the fact that hidden geometry wouldn't be affected by proportional editing to make the cover part for the lights. I'm selecting these protruding details by selecting a face loop with Alt left click and then using Select More. Select More was the last operator I still used the numpad for, but recently I just added it to Quick Favorites. And here's our finished traffic light. After recording, I tweaked colors and composition a little, added some rim lights on the sides, and this is what I got in the end. A little bird on top of the traffic light I made for the park island that I'm going to be modeling in the next video. So subscribe to this channel to see the video when it comes out. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.